so welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today is going to be my second quarter planning update. So I promised that I would do a planning update every quarter and that I would also do a journaling update every quarter and it is time for our second quarter. So here I am. All right, let's get into what I'm doing this quarter. If you're interested how this has changed from the first quarter of 2018, I will link that video down below in the description box. And I will also have a playlist just of all my planning and journaling updates from now on. If those aren't already in a playlist, I will make one. All right, so let's get into my weekly planning first and talk about that. And then we'll go into daily. If you are new here, welcome. And for those that have already been following me, I'm sorry if you don't want um, to go over all the back information, but I'm going to go ahead and go over all this for someone new who's following because I don't want them to feel lost. So I am using an Erin Condren vertical right now, colorful for 2018. And I have been using this since September of, I've been in an Erin Condren for my weekly since September of 2017. All right, I added an extra dashboard and I wanted a neutral one. And I added this because I like to keep sticky notes really easily available right here for me to grab. And whenever I was changing my covers, I would have to move all those sticky notes. And I didn't like that. And so then I just started using an extra, you know, cover in here. I just used an extra front cover. But I didn't like the color clashing with like whatever front cover I had on and kind of just clashed with all the sticky notes and I didn't love the look of it. Really, I mean, it was fine. I'm generally not that picky of a person, but I thought since I'm always gonna be using it like this, why not get a nice neutral dashboard for this? So that's what I did. And if you haven't been following and you don't know, these are one and a half by two inch sticky notes. So the sticky is on that side. I cut them into thirds, generally like that. Just snip, snip, it's two cuts. And then I stick them all where the sticky part's at the top and I can just grab them really easily. And you will see how I've used them throughout this planner. I also use them on my wall calendar in front of my desk in the kitchen uh, so that if anything changes with events I am not sure about, they can be easily moved and, you know, put somewhere else or completely changed up. So that's how I use those and I just like them to be easily accessible. I have found these, the easiest place to find them for me is Amazon. And these three colors come in a three pack, this really light, light, light blue, this blue and this pink come in a three pack or you can buy all yellow. So I think they have brighter colors, but I was trying to pick the most toned down colors so it didn't clash with all my planning. So that's why I have this extra dashboard in there. Okay, since we are into the second quarter now, we are near the end of April. I am going to do a flip through just from the beginning and then I will speed it up so that you guys can just see what it looks like, my planning looks like. Okay, now we've done a flip through from January through April where we are into this point, the beginning of the second quarter of the year we are nearing the end of April, and this is the week we are on right now, and this is what my planning looks like. So, you can tell events that I know about way ahead of time. I do put some things on her stickers, but a lot of times events that come up when I just don't have my stickers out and I'm not um, in that planning mode, although I do keep the stickers in the back pocket, but sometimes I'm just, I'm not that worried about it. I always do have one color a month that I go with either in a flare pen or in the Erin Condren dual tip markers, which I also love. And I believe this is her dual tip marker. Yeah, and that's a flare pen. So they're kind of the same color, but I'll pick that color of the month and I will usually write the event in like that to highlight it. Um, anything that goes in this top box is appointments or really important things I have to remember for that day or go-tos. That means an errand I have to do on that day or somewhere we have to go on that day. It may not be an appointment, but it's kind of like a non-negotiable thing that has to happen to that day 
or I have to go there that day. So that is the only thing that I use the top box for. It can also be like for important things like remembering to watch the Boston Marathon. <laughs> but things like that, I try not to clutter up the top boxes with anything that's not important like that. And sometimes I don't do a great job at that. Sometimes I end up sticking things up here that maybe at the time I'm writing them, I think they're like high importance for the day, but then they become where they're not high importance for the day and they're cluttering up that box. So sometimes I do wish I would have written them in the second box, but generally these are appointments, go-tos, or really high important things for the day. And the next boxes, just catch anything and everything. Um, and then anything else that's left can go in these last boxes. Things that aren't so important, but I want to remember, like the end of the fifth, six weeks at school, I'll put down here. I'll remind myself on a Sunday, if there's no school the next day on Monday right here, because that helps me. If it's Earth Day, even though they wrote it tiny up here, for some reason, I generally look over those little tiny things a lot, because I guess it's like just pre-printed in there, and my mind doesn't go to that little tiny print to read it. So I just like to have it here. But, and then sometimes I'll write something good that happened that day down here if I want to remember it. And this week I'm a little bit behind because it is Tuesday and I have not filled in my workouts, which go down here. So let me show you the past weeks. That's not normal for me, actually. I'm pretty good at just jotting that down every day. And I also haven't filled in my weather for the week, but I do it every single week. Like I have not missed a week or my workouts. So... I just, after this video, I got to remember to do that. Sometimes, you know, time gets away from us. But generally, Sunday or Monday, I come in and fill in all my temperatures. So, yeah, they're not so accurate because I fill them in for a week at the time. But I like to be able to glance at the week and generally see how the weather is going to be. And I don't want to remember to write it in every single day. And I like to have a record of kind of how the weather was. So that's why I just write in a week at a time. And yes... Like I said, that makes the temperatures not be so accurate many times because the forecast can change a lot from Monday to Sunday, but that's what I do. And then I just jot down what I did for my workout that day uh, just because I just like to kind of look over it. And even though generally I do the same things on the same day of the week, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday or something, Tuesday, Thursday, something, but I like to jot it down. Any big things for the week I want to remember go over here, but I also keep a daily planner and a weekly list. And so that is why this doesn't look so congested. This doesn't get so filled up because that is what my daily planner and my weekly and monthly lists are for. And we will get into that next. But so my planning really hasn't changed a lot since January, since my first quarter update. I am still using this planner in the same way. It stays open on my little desk in the kitchen all the time and it stays at home and it stays open and this is kind of like my guiding light, like my North Star. I would say that with my week open right here. So this is like my North Star. I do fill in the monthlies in this planner, but I do that kind of ahead of time and if things change, I don't come back and change the monthlies in here much. Because this monthly is not like my guiding light. This is not the monthly that I go by. This is more of a record of like what happened, like I said, since I don't come and change it a lot. So just because for me, I don't, I'm not often turning to the month. I use, um, well, I used to go by my wall calendar, my Inkwell Press desk pad wall calendar was like my guiding star on the wall and everything had to be changed in there, anything that happened. But that's kind of a pain to take it down off the wall and to go change months ahead. And I, I only use these sticky notes on my wall calendar in all this one color. And that way it's really easy to change things when they get messed up. But you still have to take it off the wall where it is. It's kind of in a tricky spot by my little kitchen desk. And so when I was given this Ashley Shelley monthly calendar notebook to review earlier this year, I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to give this a try because I've often wanted an easier way to plan, you know, my monthly month ahead than the big desk pad wall calendar. And don't ask me to explain exactly why I don't love this to be my guiding monthly. I just, I need all my months in a row and nothing in between. And I need to not keep flipping back to this page to my months. 
I don't know. You guys, I can't explain a good reason why, like, these have never been my guiding star for months. It's always been my desk pad wall calendar. Until now. Since whenever I was given this, I think it was in February, um, to review, I have fallen in love with using this. This also stays laid out on my kitchen desk. So it's like right next to my weekly on my kitchen desk. And now... I do not have to take the big desk pad off the wall every single time I want to change an event. And that is like a game changer. This has been so much easier. All this is, is your monthly calendars. And I've assigned a color to every month. And so you can see in between is a dot grid note page, but that's it in between every month. And I do have a full review on this monthly calendar book and on Ashley Shelley's products. I will try her other products like her planner and some of her other notebooks. I will try to remember to link that down below. It's just really good quality paper and I love the size of it. It's so compact because I can't really fit anything else bigger on my desk. And if I do want to take my calendar with me somewhere to pre-plan something, this is easy to take. Although all my big events are also put in my phone in iCal. So I don't really take this anywhere with me. So yeah, all the big events are put in my phone, but I cannot live off my phone. That's kind of just if I'm out and I need to see when something is like ahead of time. I, I can't look at that for my guiding light. I've never been able to, but it is convenient to have all my big events in my phone and to be able to have also my teenager look at that. And you know, only certain events I've made where he has to see them, things he's involved in. So that is helpful. But this is what I've been using for my guiding light for my monthly planning, and it has been so helpful. The only thing I can say I wish is I wish she didn't have any color on her months so that as I assign it a color, you know, the aqua blue um, and the purple heart wouldn't clash with it and how the months are purple over there. I do love her lines because it has made me write more neatly, keeps me in check, especially since these are, you know, smaller boxes. But actually, I'm writing neater than I write in the Erin Condren bigger boxes, I've noticed. And that is because of the lines. So I really never knew this until I got this small book that I really like having the lines in here for this book. So like I said, my only dream to change this book would be that there are no lines. And actually, I kind of don't need the page in between. So I would, I would be great with just flipping from month to month. But I'm okay with the page in between, too. So you can see how I've given each month a color and I've already filled out all our important stuff through the end of the year and that's it. So I absolutely love this little book. It is a stapled monthly book by Ashley Shelley. It is held up beautifully. I don't bring it a lot of places. This is an Ollie clip, which the best place I know to buy it is Container Store. I will try to remember to link it below. Um, but I know you can get them in lots of Etsy shops and other different designs and stuff like that there. So if you don't just want the plain colored or the metallic, you could also look there. But I got mine at Container Store. I actually have a Container Store near me, um, close enough, so I actually bought mine in store. But they are listed online too. And like I said, I'll try to remember to link that below. So it works perfect. It lays out on my desk. The clip can open right to the page. It's just, this has been great. I'm not even sure I need my big uh, wall calendar next year, which would be like the first year. And like, I can't even ever remember my 20 years of marriage that I would not have a wall calendar. So I'm not sure if I can not do that, but it seems redundant. It seems like I don't need to keep up with the wall calendar. What I do with that right now, my Inkwell Press desk pad wall calendar hangs on command hooks in front of my desk. And I have a whole video review about that too. I'll try to remember to link that down below too. But I just, what I do is I go fill that in now when we get to that month. So I don't have to worry about taking it on and off the wall and pre-planning out ahead in it and worrying about all that. I just, I fill it in when we get to the month that we're on for that month. And it's just bigger. It's above my desk. But I really don't need it since I have this. So this is something new to me as in February and it has become one of my favorite new things of this year of 2018. Absolutely love it. Also, I know you can choose to get lined pages in between here 
or dot grid. So I didn't get to choose because this is just what she sent me, but you can choose to have lined or dot grid in between on here. All right, and I'm sure she will be making these for 2019 too because it is a great seller. Okay, so weekly planning, that is how I do it. If you guys want to know maybe how do I use these little pages in between your month, let's go to one. So like these pages. Um, I use them for whatever I need that month. Although there is one thing kind of constant that I keep on here. I do keep track of when we go to visit um, my husband's dad and have dinner with him. And then because we usually go for two Sunday dinners a month. And then I do keep track of if we see my parents or do anything with them that month. And then, because I just kind of like to see, you know, if we're keeping up with both our parents. And then I do keep track of if we got donuts that month, that's only so my youngest son can't say at the end of the month, we never got donuts this month. Because we, we get donuts from our favorite donut shop once a month. And during the summer, it's usually more than once a month. But during the school year, I promise it will be once a month. And sometimes it's more, but it's, you know, I say it's going to be once a month. And that way, at least I have it recorded. And if he asks me, I can say we already got them on this date, remember? And then it's there. And then I also write on if we went on any dates that month um, and what we did just so I can remember. And sometimes I write big things that happened that month that I don't want to forget also. Or keep track of special family time and games we played, like who got to take the game that time. I haven't been good at keeping track of that, but I wanted to. But here you guys can see, like for March, I mainly only kept my main categories. I didn't keep track of much else there. For April, what have I done so far? Um, I haven't written anything in, even though we have already gone to Grandpa's once. So I haven't written that in, and we have already gone on a date. So I generally try to fill that in as we go, but obviously I didn't haven't done that yet this month. So let's see, I showed you February. Let's look at January. January got much more filled in. So obviously I started the year out with great enthusiasm for using that page up and recording big events of the month. So maybe I'll pick that back up, but that is how I use that page. I've already told you guys, I do fill in the monthly ahead of time, but then I don't go back and make a lot of changes. If changes happen, I do put big things for the month. If I want to remember here, you can kind of see, um, how my next month is filled out ahead. So all the big things are on there. Yes, I already got them on there. And being the last month of school, there kind of is a lot of stuff in there. And then, you know, June, I already have big things on there too. July, there's a couple. So that's the way my months planned ahead are looking. Here's the way my weeks planned ahead are looking because I have many people ask me, you know, do you plan ahead? Yeah, I'm not one of those people that sits down and does my planner once a week. I mean, I actually need it for planning. I don't understand how people do that. So when they say like, oops, my planner didn't get filled out this week and it's all blank. If you're one of those people, I'm not attacking you. I'm just saying I don't, I couldn't live my life like that because I have to fill it out. You know, but look, this is next week. There's already stuff on there. So as stuff comes up or I think of stuff, I do put it on here. And if it's not permanent, I try to not stick it in permanently. These stickers come off really easily. So I've had to change things with those and that is not a problem to move at all. You can tell I'm not a huge sticker person, but these did come in my spring surprise box and I do like them. And I also have bought her seasonal sticker book, and I do like those. So any stickers you see in here are from her last seasonal sticker book, not her newest one. Because I decorated this ahead of time with her last seasonal sticker book. I really don't have time to add stickers as the year goes. So I find it fun to just put all my stickers in when I get my seasonal sticker book. And then that's pretty much all I do sticker-wise. Unless extra stickers like those come in a seasonal surprise box. Then I just have my seasonal sticker book and they've already been put in there since the beginning of the year. So that's how I do it because I just, I don't have time to pull out my stickers every week and decorate. So it's like one big decorating session and I find it kind of fun like while I'm watching a show. And then I just don't think about stickers again for the entire rest of the year. 
So that's how it is. And if you look for my planning ahead, you can see there's already stuff on here that I'm thinking about ahead and I will go ahead and write stuff ahead of time. And yeah, I don't sit down. The week just gets more filled up as it gets closer and closer because I'm just, I'm writing more stuff down in it. And then it gets filled out, you know, completely as the week goes on. So even if you go into July, we're probably going to find some weeks with something written in them. So there's already appointments put in there, things like that. And if you want to look back and see how do my weeks look, you know, when they're completely filled out and done, well, every week looks different because it just depends on how busy that week was. And like I said, my whole week does not get taken over because I have a daily planner also. There is no way I could fit all my lists in a weekly planner and it would get to be such a mess that I wouldn't, it wouldn't be any help to me. It just, it wouldn't be functional. I wouldn't be able to use it because there would be too much in it and I wouldn't be able to tell what I am doing. So these are how my weeks look. Some get more filled in, some are less filled in, and this is this week right now that we're on. And sometimes when we get to stickers, um, I will just pick them up and write that thing on the calendar, or sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll just leave the post-it notes if I'm too busy and I'm just not really caring, and I will just leave the post-it notes on there. So sometimes it gets permanently put in and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so that is the story of this. I also always tear out her sticker pages, and I stick them in this folder back here because they're just easier for me to access and to use. Let's see what else. That's just a pen test. Um, I do store some important notes back here. I keep another little bookmark back here. I don't have a bookmark on the page I'm on because it's always open on my desk, so I don't need that. But I love these little bookmarks. This stays back here. It's keeping track of our haircuts and my hair coloring, so I can keep track of how often we went and all that. And I think there's some summer lists and stuff and ideas back here. And that's the main stuff And that I have back here. I do have a dashboard back here, which I love. Okay, I bought this monthly bills dashboard. And what I did was I'm not using it for bills at all because I already have a separate bill little notebook like that I've had for years and years it has kept track of my bills in a certain way. And I'm not changing that. I haven't changed it for years. It's worked for me. It's just um, um, a little notebook I keep in my desk drawer. But I wanted to keep track of how often I do my big cleaning items. Because sometimes I am like, ooh, when's the last time we washed our sheets? When's the last time that I mopped the kitchen? And so this way I have the date written down. So now whenever I do any of these big cleaning items, because I don't have set days that I do them, that does not work for me. That's just not the way that I work. And so I just come in here and I write the date under that month that I did those items and I write it in black Sharpie because this black Sharpie will not come off all year. And then you can clean it off either with rubbing alcohol or with fingernail polish remover. And I have already tested that out. Uh, when I've made mistakes on here and it's worked great. So I just write it all in in black Sharpie and it's easy for me to see when things are done. Even like when the Brita filters change, when the fridge filters changed, things like that too. So this page has really become one of my very favorite things because I don't even have to make a new chart in every planner every year. I'm just going to clean this board off and start over next year. So this is one of my very favorite hacks this year because I used to just try to like scribble it in the back pages of my planner and then I never kept up with it super well and I had to kind of, you know, free draw a chart out every time. And so I'm really happy with that monthly build tracker dashboard. On the back of it, there is a savings tracker. I'm not using that for anything, of course, because I'm not using it for bills. So this is my Erin Condren Weekly Colorful Vertical Planner. This was a cover that came in her Spring Surprise Box that was exclusive to the Spring Surprise Box. So unfortunately, it is not available on her site, but she does have a pencil pouch on her site that is available for purchase, I believe. I hope I'm not giving false information here. 
that is this exact same design that also came in the spring surprise box. Because some things that come in her seasonal surprise boxes are exclusive, meaning they'll never be sold on her site. And some are just sneak peeks, meaning they will eventually be sold on her site, but you just get them first. Okay, so that's my main bulk weekly planning. We already went over my monthly planning and why in my weird way I cannot use the months in here as my monthly guide because I must see my month constantly laid out on my desk or like I said, up on my wall. It has to be in front of me. And I just absolutely, this book has been indispensable and I don't know why more companies don't make a book like this. Like Inkwell Press should be making one almost exactly like this. Erin Condren should be making one exactly like this. It's just the tiniest little perfect monthly book. And it's been great. Okay, on to daily planning. If you follow me on Instagram, which if you don't, I'm at Amanda's Favorites. And please join me there because that is where I actually really get to know people, where I interact with you daily, where I do my giveaways, and where I give so much information in between my videos and what's really going on in my life and in my planning life. So if you guys follow me there, you already know, I change up my daily planning routine quite often to try out different daily planners, mainly for my channel and mainly just for me to see what I feel good in at the time and what do I wanna stay in. Because daily planning for me, I never pre-plan ahead. So if a daily planner has a monthly in it, I do not use the monthly for anything. Um, even if a daily planner is dated, I do not plan ahead on the dates. It messes me up in my daily planning because my daily planning is simply my lists and guidance for that day and that week. So right now, what I'm using is an undated daily planner. It's, you know, not really daily planner at all. It's Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Planner. And I do have a full video review on this planner, walkthrough of everything in it, if you're interested, we're not going to go through that right now. I will try to remember to link that down below also. Her Deluxe Monthly only has the months in it with a few extra pages. I'll show you that. And then you can add on extra note pages at the end. I have added on the extra note pages for my daily planning. So I thought I would try a Deluxe Monthly only because of this. In your Deluxe Monthly, you have a monthly spread. It has no tabs, as you can see. She does sell tabs and I talk all about that and show you a deluxe monthly that I put tabs on in that review video that I will link down in the description box. But in this deluxe monthly, I filled out the month, but I'm not gonna keep up with that because I am not looking at this month. So there's really no point for me filling it out. But I do like this. There are five boxes that go with every month and then just this blank productivity page. And for this, this is my monthly list for April. And I can divide it up into like to-do, errands, call on, online, my husband, my son. So I really love how it's divided up for my monthly list. So there's some type of organization for it and I didn't have to draw out a chart. So I like that. I like that my monthly list also resides in the same book as my weekly and daily list. So I really like that. So I keep one of her tabs right here for her little bookmarks, which I absolutely love. And then I keep one back here for the daily. And what I do every week is I come here and I write my Monday through Sunday. I write any main events or appointments we have. And then I just kind of divide up my chart to do, to call, computer with my son, weekend. So I have one page devoted to that whole week. And then I just start my daily list. Sometimes my daily list takes an entire page. Sometimes my daily list only takes half a page. And sometimes it gets to be a big mess. And sometimes it's less of a mess. So this is what my daily lists look like back here. And when I run out of this paper, um, I have an extra Erin Condren notebook. So I figured I would attempt to recoil for the first time if I was still use, using this when I ran out of paper. I would attempt to recoil and of course possibly film that and show it to you guys when I do that. But I'm not near running out of paper yet. So we won't have to worry about that, but yet. But anyway, I've really enjoyed this and let me tell you why. Because I love Erin Condren paper, first of all. 
it smells good. It feels good to write on. I like the bright white background. So the paper is just pleasing to me. I've been liking to write with this um, G2 Pilot Precise 07 pen in here. It's a little bit thicker than I normally write. I usually do the 05, but all I had was an 07 in this colored pen, and I'm kind of liking it. And so I've been really enjoying this because all my lists are together, like I said. And this just stays on my table spot right next to me every single day like this, folded over. And at my dining room table, which is kind of like my headquarters for my homeschool and for me working during the day in the kitchen and homeschooling. And so this has been working really good as my daily for a while now. But if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen I have changed dailies a couple times this year. And that is simply because dailies are easy for me to change because I don't date them or pre-plan them ahead. And so they're just, they're easy for me to change. And I sometimes like to try out a daily planner for you guys. So I can report on really how the paper worked, how it felt to me, how did the organization of it feel to me. Of course, all of that is very personal and we're all gonna feel really different about a planner that we use. Our lives are so different, our personalities are so different, but I just like hearing people's opinions on those type of things. And so I figure that you guys do too. So when I can when I can try out a daily planner without stressing myself out for a couple days, I do. So I've tried out different ones this year. I have used daily, dated daily planners before. I used Emily Lay for three years before this year. I used her daily planner and I have videos on that. So right now I'm just really enjoying this. And if you want to see as I change along the road in my daily planner, you can follow me on Instagram at Amanda's Favorites. But those are my main planning components right now. That is my second quarter update. Planning update, you guys. That's it, that is what I'm using. That's how it's going, and if you follow me on Instagram, then you get to see lots of snippets and pictures from this planning and what is going on. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Happy planning. We'll see you next time.